Hi, this is Glenn. I just wanted to show you a summary of what I have of version one of Flowsheets. Uh, so Flowsheets is a data flow programming environment. It's meant to work sort of directly with data that your programs are outputting as you write them. So this is the environment. Uh, there's a few things you can do here. You can enter in data nodes like strings and numbers and lists. Um, you can also type in, uh, enter in function nodes. Uh, so this is a data node, this is a function node. This is a Python function node. It has some code here on the left, uh, which you can edit, and the output of that code on the right. And you can chain these things together. So I can drag sort of the A from here into here, and just kind of return that A there. So if I change something up here, it will change anywhere that relies on this data. So you can also add JavaScript blocks in this prototype. Let's sort of drag a JavaScript block, uh, something in here. And I can do that again. Change the data, it updates wherever anything relies on that data. So the idea of this environment is they're always sort of looking at uh, concrete data as you build a program. Uh, I have Python and JavaScript blocks in here, but ideally you'd be able to sort of build these once and then kind of hide the code away and then just have a function uh, that sort of does what you want. And you can rename this function something like, you know, just return A. Hide the code, and I imagine there's sort of a sidebar or some kind of library that you can sort of get these functions from. So one thing I'd like to do is show you what it's like to actually build a real program in this environment. So let's do that. This is a program that uh, Toby wrote. It's trying to download a uh, SVG icon from the Noun Project, which is a graphical icon library. So I'm going to enter in a Noun Project ID here. Call it ID. And then we want to create a URL from that ID. So generate a URL from ID. And there's an exception that was thrown. It sort of highlights in red and says that a string, an integer object can't be concatenated. So I'll just kind of convert ID here. That's pretty good. Add an in slash. OK, there we go. And so now we have a URL. I'll hide the code here. Make it smaller. So then what we need to do is download that URL. So we can download. URL. I'll type some setup code here, which is just an import statement to use the Python request library. And then we'll do, we'll download it. And it's saying that the content of that page is the string, you don't have permission to access this page, which it turns out you need to add a specific header to your request. Uh, and I'll just do that now. That looks better. Um, let's just make that JSON output and then hide the code. And so then we got this JSON. And the thing we need specifically is this icon URL field. So let's get that. Then it looks like we got the correct URL there. And you can sort of hide the code here. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, I'm fighting with the black thing, the black highlight a little bit. Uh, the highlighting feature is just meant so that you can highlight a reference and see where that data came from. It's a little buggy, so it kind of sticks around more than I would like. So I'll just kind of ignore that for now. 
and then we want to download the SVG. And there we go. Now we have the SVG, the code that shows the SVG. Um, it would be kind of an obvious improvement to have a visualization of the SVG, what it outputs here. And I think that's, I would love if you could have arbitrary visualizations instead of just this text, you could have any kind of number of visualizations that you'd want. Uh, and I'd like you to be able to custom make your own for whatever your purpose is and kind of plug it into this kind of framework. Um, but that's kind of creating a program in Flow Sheets. Um, I, something I like about it is that you're always working with concrete data. So you're usually in programs, you write this abstract stuff that works for any different number of parameters, like any different, lots of different types of data, but you never actually see the data running through your program. And I think a lot of mistakes in programming are made that way, and it's very difficult for beginners especially to sort of understand what's going on when they have to imagine what all the data is in their program that's being manipulated. Um, so another thing I like about this environment is that it's very kind of playful. So if I want to test out, oh, what would happen if I change this to a nine and change the ID and then I can sort of look, oh, okay, here's what happens. I change that and anything that relies on that is recalculated. I can kind of change it back here. Another feature I like is this thing I've been calling uh, creating a what-if scenario. So it has this idea of built-in what-if scenarios. So I can change, I can point to any of the output of a function and change it. Just kind of point in there and edit it. And it turns yellow to indicate that you have manually edited this uh, piece of data. And now the program flow is interrupted and replaced with whatever you input there. And so anything that relies on URL, the URL uh, piece of data, uh, is recalculated. And I can sort of mouse over this and switch between the two, like this is what I had before, this is what I had after, and I can click here and change it back, and now it's gone. And I can do that with any kind of any thing here. It'll sort of highlight the line that's changed and let you clear it out. One thing I forgot to mention is loop variables and looping. So here's this idea of a loop here. And you can loop over strings and lists and key value stores. So let's loop over JSON output. And right now it gives you, uh, it loops over the keys of the key value uh, data structure. If you hit the next button down here, you can see that this is 2 of 22. It's kind of going through one by one, sponsor, year, going through all of these. And so then you could use that to get the value of each thing. So this B is now a loop variable. And I'd also want JSON output in here. If I do JSON output at B, you can see that we, for the key year, we're getting back the value 2016. And if I sort of go through each of these, I see what each of the values is. And if I want to collect those values, I could use this collect, uh, excuse me, I'd use this collect operator collect D into a list, and then it would give me the values of the key value store. So calculator, this URL, uh, an empty key value, object 2016, and so on. All of the values from this JSON output thing. And that's just one example of kind of the, thing you, the things you can do with this, is collect values from a loop into a list. And you can also filter them, um, which is using a collect if, uh, which adds a condition that you can calculate uh, to see if that thing should end up in the list or not. 
so that's what I've created so far, uh, mostly with Alex Worth and uh, Marco Roeder. Uh, I would like to show a very quick few mock-ups of what I had planned. So here are mock-ups of programs that I've actually written in Python and tried to rewrite in flow sheets, but sort of just mocking up and seeing how it looked. So here are the early examples of having this looping uh, mechanism. I have determined since using this program that I do not like the way this looping works. One item at a time, looking at one item at a time is actually, it looks like looking through a pinhole. You really want to see all the data that you can at once. Um, so that will have to be redesigned, which I'm looking forward to doing. Um, I'd also like to do visualizations, as I mentioned earlier. So here is visualization of sort of you're downloading this data and it's if giving you back some binary data, but you'd like to be able to see that as an image, which we're doing here. Um, I'd also like to be able to create functions by, uh, so here is a flow sheets program of calculating inflation. So here's some data from the US, the US government. Uh, I created this function by adding in three data nodes with uh, these values like $20 in 2014 is worth how much in 1980. And I want to just do a very simple calculation. And I want to package that up into a function, which is what this kind of blue box is, light blue box. So I drag, I click and drag around all of these nodes, which I've already done, and that creates a function. The things outside the box are the parameters to the function, and they are saved so that the next time you access this function, it will have default data. And so you can always have context for what the data was that was filling through this function. It's not just an abstract, you know, it's not just saying I have some amount, I have some base year, and I have some test year. It has a specific amount, base year, and test year that you can play with and change and see how the creator of the function meant it to be used. Um, going through more mockups, I'd like to create um, a sidebar of functions, uh, a library of functions that come with flow sheets and ones that, you know, user programs that they can add functions to and then sort of drag out from here. I don't imagine people should be writing Python and JavaScript as much. I think they should be using this environment as much as possible and sort of digging into Python and JavaScript if they want, but being able to do everything they can sort of in the environment instead of typing text, which is not uh, very friendly and I think could actually be a lot faster than typing text uh, if I did it right. Uh, I'd also like to be able to, you know, I showed visualizations before. I ideally like those visualizations to be interactive so that by, you know, here's a web page and I want specific data from that web page. Ideally, I should just be able to click on a few items in this column and be able to get that data back as a list and do more computations on it elsewhere in the, my program. But I should be able to use my mouse to select it because otherwise you have to either, you know, figure out a CSS selector that gets you exactly that data or do some weird regular expressions or all these things that don't feel very friendly. Like I think it'd be a lot faster and easier and nicer just to be able to use your mouse. I have some ideas that I've uh, talked through with Alex about how to do that. Um, I would also like to uh, redesign how data is laid out in flow sheets. Here is an early example of you know, trying out a different approach where these flags are more like titles of data. And this are on the left, they're bold, they like become very important. I think that's a good call. That was something Heim pointed out to me. But one thing I discovered after using this program uh, using flow sheets is that having things laid out in columns and rows, uh, maybe unsurprisingly if you use a spreadsheet, is really important. So I'd like to be able to redesign flow sheets in a way that lets you line up data uh, and see the transformations on it in a much simpler way because uh, it also adds in program comprehension to know that this piece of data turned into this piece of data turned into this piece of data. I think having things like that would be really helpful in aiding comprehension and um, making your program 
a lot easier and safer and more robust. So that's it for now. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Bye.